been so great at talking about colleagues and things that you've heard and read. Let's talk about your own personal success strategy. How do you stay sharp, focused, faithful? You're one of my favorite people to talk to. I'll tell you that. You always got that smile on your face. And given the work that you do, you know, I could see you coming in saying, hey, Mike, this is Aaron. And that's not your energy. So talk about your own personal <laughs> resilience strategies, man. How do you do it? How do you do it? So, I mean, my primary is I prioritize sleep. Like, that is my <laughs> that is my time to heal. That is my priority. Uh, right. My wife said that is the priority. Like, daddy sleeping and sleeping, you know, whatever the call is, you know, he's sleeping right now. And right. after that, I always try to really stay optimistic, um, especially with all the things that were changing. It's very common for people to, you know, huff about changes and, oh man, like they just told us this yesterday and now they're changing it to this. And sometimes you just like, hey, let's just go with it, you know? And so yeah. that's, I just say that all the time, like, you know, make humor of it. Like, hey, we're just going to go with it. It's a show of the times, right? Um, right, so, right. <laughs> and then um, I often set some time, some time uh, to myself to like start up, right? I like when I wake up, I give myself like 15 minutes to just lay there. Most people like wake up and they dart to their phone and start their day that way. Um, but I yeah. like to wake up, you know, kind of like when you boot on a computer. I like to just warm up a little bit, you know, like yeah. warm up to the day a little bit. Let me just kind of, you know, see how I'm feeling, you know. <laughs> I got right, a little right. cough, you know, you might think. After you wake up with a little cough, you're like, oh, no, I got COVID, you right. know. Nowadays, nowadays for real. <laughs> I last time I, I tried I've been trying to order supplies, you know, online and have them delivered, but I had to go into one of those big box stores a few days ago and I just had a little tickle in my throat and I knew a quick call for clearing would clear it. And I was afraid to do that in the middle of this crowded store because nowadays, you know, somebody coughs and you can jump back. Um let me ask you a little bit let me ask you a little bit follow up to that question. You said you prioritize sleep. How much sleep do you get per day? We've talked about that on the Brother Be Line, Brother Be Well platform. How much sleep are you getting every day? Shockingly, I work a uh, night shift. So I work 6.45 at night to 7.15 in the morning and I will get eight hours. <laughs> I will tell yeah. you, I will get eight hours. Do I always get my water in? No, but I will always get my eight hours of sleep. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> I usually will come home and take some time to kind of like wind down after my shower and I will get my eight hours always. <laughs> Good to hear. Good. Good to hear. And and I might have thrown my engineer off a little bit. I'm going to ask you now about um, about how do we, how are you guys being heard? Are your voices being heard? Um, you're right on the front lines. You know what's going down. You know what you need to do your job. You know what families need. The people that are making policies and developing procedures to help you do your work, are they listening to you guys? And, and putting together policies and procedures that support you in the work that you're doing in the middle of this unpre I don't like to call it unprecedented. I mean, it happened a hundred years ago, but the world's a whole different world from, from 1918. Are people listening to you guys and, and talking about what you need to do your jobs? So I'm sure in the end, um, a lot of what we've come up with and a lot of the feedback we've given um, will help to iron out some uh, um, more better plans for the future. Um, I want to say like right now we're in the mix. Our numbers are starting to come back up following the holidays. Um, but my unit specifically, um, we did uh, transition into a COVID unit uh, and that happened in a matter of hours, like two hours we switched from, we only take COVID room patients in these couple rooms to our whole unit is COVID positive patients. And that really came to life came alive based on everything that we learned from our previous units. Um, so the first couple out, the first couple units that transitioned into uh, COVID units, um, you know, management comes up with an idea and strategy of how it's going to work. And then we had a, a board that we put together for um, questions and concerns. <clears throat> Cause a lot of the things that you put together on paper, it doesn't, it's not always realistic at the bedside. And so when you go, well, this doesn't really work, they would write a note and they would get someone on it. Like, how do we how do we address this issue? How do we address a COVID patient? And how do we address a COVID patient in this with these symptoms or a COVID patient needing this? And kind of going back and forth, um, we've come up with a lot of policies and so and a lot of new practices. 
And so that is really what helped put our the new unit that I was in together in like two two hours. Like to say, literally from the idea of we're doing it to full unit of COVID patients, two hours. It was amazing. And so the communication board that we have it really helps to um, to iron out policy and change um, practice in the hospital. That's great to hear. That's great to hear. I could, as always, Aaron. I, I I've enjoyed talking with you. I could I could shoot it with you for a long time. Give me your final words of wisdom. You can close us out. What final words of wisdom do you have <laughs> for nurses and other frontline workers that are feeling fatigued? They're feeling alone. They're feeling overwhelmed. They're exhausted. What final words do you have for them? I think it's very important to remember that self care is not selfish. And in order to um, show up as your best self for your patients and to show up as your best self for your coworkers, you need to take care of yourself. And that is the best thing I could say. I'm going to quote you on that, my friend. Self-care is not selfish. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> want to thank you for your time and wisdom, um, Aaron King from the Capital City Secretary of the Capital City Black Nurses Association. If you've heard anything that you like or, or, or want to know more about, check their organization out, ccbna.org. Aaron, thank you very much for coming back to the, to the Brother Be Well platform. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Um, I want to invite you. Thank you, first of all. Second of all, I should say. I uh, want to thank you for checking out the broadcast. If you've seen or heard anything that you like and you want to know a little bit more about Brother Be Well, go to mentalhealthca.org. You can see a variety of other videos there, several tips for success, resilient strategies, positive affirmations. You can even subscribe to our uh, free magazine. You can do all of that at mentalhealthca.org. Until next time again, I'm Michael P. Coleman. I'm the content director and proud to be that for Brother Be Well. And I want to encourage you until next time, you do me a favor, take good care of yourself and take good care of somebody else. Bye-bye.